Hello fellow psychology and gamer nerds, my name is Brian Hamilton. Today we are going to be talking about the Color Monster board game. Based on the best-selling book written by Anna Ayanas and designed by Joseph Ayu and Danny Gomez, the game was published in 2019 and was the winner of the Palme d'Argent Award for the Best Educational Game. Let's have a look! In this game, players take on the role of the Color Monster. If they roll a 1 or 2 on the 6-sided die provided, the players can move the monster one or two spaces. If they roll a swirl, they can move the monster anywhere they want on the board. If they roll the little girl, the players move her next to the monster. More on this later. There are six squares on the board, each representing a different emotion. Five of them contain colored monsters that correspond with the emotion. For example, the square for anger is red, as is the monster placed on that square. Each time the monster lands on a square, the player who moved the monster has to describe something that makes them feel that way. So for example, if they land on the sad square, they might say, I feel sad when my brother takes my toys. For players who struggle to name things that make them feel a certain emotion, you can have them choose instead to describe something that makes the color monster feel that way. For example, if players land on calm and can't think of anything, they might say something like, the color monster feels calm when he is in his cave. Once players have announced something that makes them feel the emotion on the square where they've landed, they get to flip over one of eight colored bottles located on one of two shelves to see if the color of the bottle matches the emotion. For example, if they land on the yellow square for happy, players must find the yellow bottle. If the bottle is the wrong color, players place the bottle back face down and play passes to the next person. If the bottle is the right color, players can place the colored monster from the square they landed on in the bottle. If the bottle contains a swirl of colors, the bottle remains face up. If the players find three of the swirl bottles, all of the monsters they have collected go back on the board, the bottles are reshuffled, and the game begins again. If the players are able to bottle all of the colored monsters before they flip over all three of the swirl bottles, they win. Now I mentioned earlier there's a little girl on the six-sided die. When this rolls, and players move the little girl token next to the monster, they can take one of the swirl bottles that is face up, shuffle it along with all remaining face down bottles on the corresponding shelf, and place them back face down. When playing with younger kids, I use a house rule that the swirl bottle is just flipped back over to help them with memory and strategy. Since the game is a cooperative game, there are no cards or other pieces that players are keeping hidden from one another, this is a great game to use in telehealth. You can set the game up at your workstation, turn the camera to face the board, and move the pieces for your clients. Personally, I have created a version of the Color Monster board game for the Roll20 Virtual Tabletop. The board was created using Incarnate, the online mapping software that allows you to create your own maps for tabletop games, while the bottle and dice imagery were taken from images found online. I like this game because it helps clients build an emotional vocabulary to describe their feelings and to identify the events in their lives that bring them up. That way, when events trigger strong emotions, clients can describe how they're feeling rather than reacting impulsively. Another thing that is great about this game is the accompanying book. Therapists can read the book and follow up with the board game, providing continuity and reinforcement of the concepts they're trying to convey during the session. If you're using parent-child interactive therapy, getting caregivers involved in the game can also help. Since it's a cooperative game, caregivers are often naturally motivated to help their kids figure out the best strategy for playing the game, which helps build trust and emotional bonds. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to be notified when I upload new content, please hit subscribe. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video, and I'll see you in therapy.